Oh, the music stopped. Hey, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, dear Digidicers, to the very first holiday special Hazardous Endeavors live stream. Hello, hello! hello. How's it going out there? Uh, we are uh, Digital and Dice, and uh, I am your host, Mark, who will be DMing for you this evening. Uh, joining me today at the table are Wizard James. Hi! Uh, who will be playing Elliot Frostmoon. Uh, Lady Crass. Hello! Uh, playing Lindo Espina, the beautiful thorn. Hello! We have uh, voiceover guy Brian. Hey! Playing uh, Wilf Tradewind. What, what? And we have sound guy Steven over there. Yo! Who will be playing Jackson Shaw. Uh, we just wanted to welcome you, first off, to our very first... Uh, live stream game of Hazardous Endeavors. Uh, we are going to be starting off the new year by uh, trying this out, seeing how this works out. We have this amazing overlay that it was cra masterfully crafted uh, by the Lady Crass and uh, with some additional art by a uh, friend of the show named Desurian, uh, who is doing an amazing job as well. I know those 8-bits are rad. Or 16-bits? I think it's 16. I think it's 16-bit. Yeah, 16 bits. 16 bit yes. guys, they're awesome. Uh, so, we uh, first off, we're just going to go ahead and say uh, this is our first live show version of this. So, uh, chances are things are going to be a bit weird. Uh, we don't have a full production crew, so hey, you don't want to you don't want to start the expectation low. No, this is going to be the most epic, wonderful, magnificent live show you've ever seen. Yeah, your mic is a little bit echoey. Oh, well. I'm, I'm, I'm reading comment, and so I popped in to, to see what I heard. And... Oh, great. That's, That's good to know. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us epic on your part. Yeah. We're, we're, we're what people are here for, apparently. I'll probably just kind of move it down a titch. A, a titch? A titch. A titch. What's, a, what's a titch? A titch. It's like a smidgen. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yes, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have some fun with this, and we're, uh, yeah, this is how it's going to be. And for those of you who enjoy listening to the RSS feed on the iTunes and all the other podcast versions, uh, this holiday special is going to be an extra special long episode, uh, so you can look forward to having this one be closer to probably an hour and a half or so, uh, with a bit of an intermission in between, which I'll cut out for the audio version. Woo! Uh, so thank you for joining us. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves situated and uh, get ourselves started with the very first Hazardous Endeavors live stream episode. So, let me adjust the music here because, well, that's something that has to be adjusted by me in this case. <laughs> we'll figure that part out oh, later. come on, you had one job. One job. <laughs> so many jobs. <laughs> so many jobs. Oh, and I forgot. Hold on. I need to make sure this is working appropriately. Really? You had one job. Make there sure your suit oh. lights up. There that is go. a horrendous suit. <laughs> Thank you. You got it for him. <laughs> it's so, right. so she knows. No, I know, but it's so bad, guys. <laughs> she reminds her every time she looks at it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's go ahead and get ourselves started as if this were pretty much any other episode. Yes. All right. First off. Welcome to Hazardous Endeavors, our 5th edition actual play podcast brought to you by Digital and Dice. And this is the beginning of, well, the official beginning of Season 2. So if you haven't listened to Season 1, go back, take a listen. They're available on our website. You can find them on iTunes, YouTube, all the wonderful places you can find podcasts. So getting us started, though, where we last left our intrepid adventurers. Ooh. You had defeated Kavro Seldith in the Temple of Bane, squirreled away beneath the rotting hills. Yeah, he sort of sucked. Yeah, just a little. He took Elliot's hand. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it, he well, did. Well, something took Elliot. No, no, it was it was definitely the fault of Bane that Elliot lost his hand. Agreed. But nobody Agreed. actually took his hand. It's fine. Like, yeah, no fault whatsoever. <laughs> right. Do you concur? No. Right then. <laughs> so, the aftermath of your escapades, where you had gone down, you had defeated Kavro Seldith, you had made your way into the final, what would you say, crucible at the end, where the massive statue of Bane was being presided over by a massive swirling vortex of negative energy. Oh, you mean the boss room? 
Yes, yes. Ah, the boss room, yes, we remember this. To where you ran into a particular individual, a towering, dark, armored, smoky form. That, the master. Yes, uh, that in a, well, in, in what you can only assume to be some sort of righteous anger, uh, pulled Cavro Seldeth's philacrity out of the room, smashed it to pieces in front of his swirling, echoing soul as it was escaping, and left, leaving you in the temple to escape before it crumbled. I mean, convenient. We do not have to uh, kill the Gavril, man. Also, we don't have to quite worry about having to pass all the challenges again, like, on the way out. That seems like it could be really inconvenient. Right. I, I think it could do that backwards. Okay. <laughs> no. Luckily... Uh, a spell that you were able to pull out of the treasure room just before the collapse allowed you to teleport back to uh, the last place that Elliot wished to go, which in this case happened to be the bathroom at uh, one of the inns you stay at in Kellen Hall. The actual room with baths, not the other one. Ah. Yeah, that's, that's a lot more helpful. Right. <clears throat> Less cramped. A bathing room. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. A bathhouse? Yes, the bathhouse attached to the back of the inn. Yeah, you know, big brass tubs. Mm-hmm. I believe they were made of wood. No, not brass now. They're brass so, now? That's fine. We it's could, best we, 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 we could use a soak. Yeah, especially fine. after that. Brett Conning's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, as this is our holiday special, we will leave some of the other aftermath of what happened and the bits and pieces of that for next episode. But for this one, we find you still in Kellen Hall, gearing up and gathering your stuff uh, for the journey to your next destination. Mm -hmm. But before you are able to fully get ready to go and you're still gathering everything, uh, you will receive a notice. Uh, a, a, A wrapped up scroll in gilded case will arrive at the inn where you are staying, addressed to the Dawn Guard. Ha ha! I, I think that actually is us now. Yes, I'll take that. Okay. So you, you open. open the scroll case, you pull out the scroll, and in meticulous writing, you see a, a, a scroll work uh, expertly done. And it says that this is the request. The just shy of a demand, but a request from an individual named Einkill Screwgavel. And it is a dwarf uh, that you, well, figured from the name, that is in need of your assistance. They have been cursed. And they need bodyguards for the evening. (laughs) For you see, tonight is one of their big winter festival celebrations. As it is gearing towards the end of the year, moving (laughs) on into the new, where feasts and celebrations are happening all across the city. And this particular dwarf states in his letter that he has been cursed by some raggedy old woman on the street that he is going to be visited by ghosts this evening. And he is wanting protection and is willing to offer no more than 600 gold pieces for your protective services over the evening. Oh, so uh, we got to babysit some uh, some guy who believes in a whole bunch of hog swallop. Uh, a screw gravel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like that. And he wants to give us six hundred gold for babysitting. Uh, we'll definitely fund uh, our endeavors for a little bit. Yeah, no, I am okay. You okay? Uh, yeah, we can do that. I guess it's not the weirdest thing I've done for gold. Definitely not. Bodyguard work. (sighs) Very well. There are directions to his mansion, which is uh, just on the outskirts of town, towards the town walls uh, on the northern end of town, which coincidentally was also one of the least touched parts during the recent troubles. So the walls of that particular small part of the city are still standing. They had guards there and were fairly well protected. Doesn't smell like undead. I've been running around all over the place. That's nice. It's it's a ritzy little joint. Right. Mm -hmm. So you gather your things for the evening and start making your way over to that particular part of town. 
as you approach the gates to the gated community, as it were, Mm -hmm. uh, the guards are apparently notified of your arrival and open the gates to let you through. Also recognizing who you are for what you have done. Uh, Why would they not recognize us? (laughs) No, they do. They do recognize you. Come on, this is Linda with Spina, the beautiful thorn. It's correct. I am the beautiful thorn. The whole thing. (laughs) Yeah, just just the thorn, though. No, no, the, the beautiful thorn, Lindo has been a beautiful thorn, whole thing. It's, it's okay. We understand that he's a bit of a prick. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the guards are very much appreciative of everything that you've done, and there are some handshakes uh, and some cheers as you make your way through. So, as you approach and make your way through down the, uh, down the road towards the mansion, you see it ahead of you. It's a fairly imposing structure, about three stories tall, large building, uh, gothic architecture, cha- you know, the, the uh, wrought iron fencing around the outside. Obviously a person who doesn't necessarily want to be visited. Ominous! And as you approach the gates, uh, a single manservant is waiting outside, shivering in the cold as, as a, a few snow flurries are coming down, and he sees you approaching, gives a very quick bow, unlocks the gate to let you in, and uh, again, shivering in the cold, he says, the master is, um, he is in the foyer. He will, he will be waiting for you. Um, best of luck, and may the gods be with you. Thank you. Do, do you need, like, a blanket or something? Uh, no, I'm, 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 on, I'm on my way home. Oh, good, because you look a little blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing, it's nothing. It's all right, he's just, he's just chilling out. Ha! <laughs> I, oh, I get it. Like, because he is cold. <laughs> yes. So. Maybe he had a hot temper and he needed to cool his heels. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That was not It as... was nice to meet you. Those, those were not as good. No. So, Those have been played out he already. He actually steps out of the gates and closes them. Doesn't lock them, but closes them behind him. Uh, holding his coat around him, he exits and leaves down the street, leaving you to make your way to the doors. Um, one of you guys is going to have to get the knocker. Well, <clears throat> why do I never get to hit the knocker? Because you're short. Uh, I, I'm not that short. He is not that short. <laughs> <laughs> So, mailed fist pounding at the door, and sure enough, as you're, you wait for a moment, you wait for a moment, and you hear from inside, yes, yes, just a moment, and you hear the thumping of heavy booted feet on the other side, and the sound of latch, another latch, a chain, another latch, another chain, and the crack of the door opens slightly, stopping at another chain, and you see a grizzled old face with a pair of half-moon spectacles. Look out. Hello! Uh, Are you screw gavel? Yeah. You them? Uh, yeah? We're you, all think, four. you think we wear the shiny breastplate like this for four. just good looks? I mean, admittedly, yes, I look yeah. great in it, but... Yeah, good looks, I suppose. All right. Yeah, all right. Come in, come in. Come in. He closes the door. You hear another chain leave and swings it open. And as you step inside, you note that the whole place is just filled with the trappings of a very well-to-do person. You see, you know, gilded uh, painting frames. You see candelabras. You see things like that. Um, And all around you, everything just seems cold. It doesn't look like this place is being lived in. So there's no dust per se. It looks like the place is clean, but it also doesn't look like there is a family here. It, it's just this big, rich, empty house. Well, looks rather homely in here. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm not paying you to make judgments. That's all right. Those come for free. That is true. We will judge you for free. <laughs> mm. They will. Yeah. I pick up well, a gamble lumber. Put Ooh. that down. That is not yours. So... Hmm. I put it down. Hmm. You, you say you're haunted? Yeah. 
I was walking through the town the other day. I was making my way back, and there was this dirty old woman on the side of the road, and she started asking for money. Mm. Can't have anyone just begging on the side of the street. So I showed her what for with the side of my boot. You, you mean you kicked an old lady? Shoved her off to the side. Get her out of my way. Oh, I, okay. And she turns and she starts screeching at me. Thank screeching you. in the middle of town saying to me, says, you know, for your greed and your avarice, and you're going to be visited by three spirits tonight. And I'm just, yeah. well, I'm not one to believe in curses, per se, but I ain't taking any chances either. Well, I mean, to be fair, we did just survive a massive attack by a necromancer. I would understand why you'd want the most premium of protection yeah. after and dealing with that. Undead does best. happen. Yeah, well, okay. I'm going to have you stay outside my bed chambers all night, and you're going to make oh. sure that nothing comes for me. No, oh, you know. Do you have any windows in your bed chambers? Yeah. Shouldn't we be by a... They're closed and locked. Yeah, yeah. ghosts don't quite worry well, about... if you hear anything funny, you come in. Got it? Oh, uh, right. Okay. I've not going to have anyone outside my window. spending time people. with these Good, sir. recently, so... What? I can do some things that make it so I know if somebody were to ever to, en- were to ever enter your room. Is it magic? Of course. Mm. I mean, look at me. Do you think I would do anything else? You think that's magic in my room? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, to be fair. If you don't want it, that's just fine. Yeah. He constantly casts magic where I sleep, and only a couple times has he exploded the walls where I've been. That yeah, is- no. No, then. None of that. Not helping. <laughs> And fine. No alarms for you. Mm. All right. Well, get yourself situated in the hall. Right. I gotta get back to work in the morning. Can I touch a cushion or a, like a small chair? Or... Come on. Okay. Hmm. He leads you up the stairs, uh, down a hallway, outside a set of double doors. And as he opens them, you look in, and the room inside is a large four-posted bed with the... St- Curtains drawn open. You see two large windows on either side of it. You see off to one side looks like a dresser with a mirror. And again, everything is fairly clean, just doesn't look especially used. And outside in the hallway where you're standing, there's a couple candles, about three of them lit down the length of it. So leaving everything a little bit gloomy, except for Jackson, really. Oh, <laughs> oh you have a little light as well, yeah? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Who doesn't have a low light? Mine. Lindo doesn't have a low light. Do you? I do not. No, okay. No. Got it. Sorry. I have a light in my heart. <laughs> Lindo. Yes? Lindo, come here. Come okay, here. okay, come I'm coming. Here. What? What? Do you think uh-huh. you can secret yourself inside his room so he doesn't know, so he doesn't notice? You know, I probably could do that. It's not like the first time I have snuck into somebody. We don't room. need to know that. But it really... But is. it would be good to have somebody on the inside in case something does happen and he just drops dead and we don't hear anything. Yeah, okay, sure. Why not? Well, you're going to go attempt to, to be sneaky? I'm going oh, to try. Wait, wait. I've, I've, got, I've got an idea. I've oh. got an idea. Uh, it's a will find, yeah, <laughs> hey. so let's see if it works. <laughs> come here. Come here. What? Wait, okay. Yes? Boop. Invisibility. Okay. How long does that last? An hour. Last enough for him to get in there. An hour? An hour. Okay. So, as you're talking in the hallway there, um, Ankel has, has turned around and is getting something ready in his room, and he comes out back into the hallway and looks around. Yeah. Where'd the other one go? Well, he's sneaky. He's around. You just don't see him necessarily at the moment. Yeah. Like, right. like a shadow. Mm. Like a shadow at night. All right. Well, if it helps, if it I, helps, he didn't use any magic. Mm. Well, I ain't paying three of you to four of the work. Trust me, he's ro- he's rotten. Yeah, it's all right. He'll pull his own weight. Mm. All right. You stay out here. You watch the do- you watch the door. You watch the hallways. We're not gonna have anything sneak up on me. All right. You got it. Got it. Right. Solid. So. He turns. I'm not even though he cannot see me. Makes his way into his room, <laughs> slams the door behind him. So, Lindo, at this point, you've made your way into the room. You've kind of 
sidled off to the side. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know, put myself somewhere near the window. He, he goes over to a fireplace in the room, stokes it for a moment, puts some coals in the bed heater, puts it down between the mattresses, goes over to the dresser, starts to disrobe. Oh, oh God. <laughs> You hide your you, you hide for a moment. You look back. He's in a dressing gown. You put your hand over your eyes and then realize your hand is invisible. <laughs> <laughs> no. You close your I eyes. I silently scream. You close your eyes and realize your eyelids are invisible too. <laughs> you see all. <laughs> so he uh, he's got a dressing gown down to his ankles and he's got a little nightcap and he trundles over to his bed and pulls the covers open. Gets in, pulls them up, and then draws the curtains closed. And then things kind of just stay calm for a few. About five minutes later, you start hearing him snoring fairly loudly. I think around his room. Okay, you want to roll stealth for me? Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. You're, you're invisible. It doesn't mean you ain't making noise. This is true. An 11? <laughs> okay. It, you, you start making your way around. There's not much to be said about the room. The room, aside from its dimensions, about 30 feet by 30 feet. Fairly large open room. Uh-huh. See, um, you should have had to uh-huh. worry about... You make your way over to the dresser being one of the only <laughs> few pieces of furniture in the room. You start looking around and you like kind of pick up a bottle of something. It jingles when you pick it up and you hear the... <laughs> from the bed. I softly put that back down. Okay. So... Nothing happens for a little bit. He just snores away. The three of you in the hallway, you can hear the snoring through the uh, through the door. And pick my teeth. Everything yeah. seems to be going good so far. Judge yeah. his clothing. Well, I mean, imagine if a ghost showed up, Lindo would be screaming at the top of his lungs. At the... So yeah, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident. Right, Lindo, I need a perception check from you, please. Perception at ten. Okay. I am very perceptive. You're you're wandering around the room. You're looking about. You're trying to see if there's anything interesting here. And really just trying to make it so you're less bored. But about an hour goes by before you hear just this brief kind of, like, tinkling sound. And it's like, look around. And you look over towards one of the windows. And there's a bit of a wind coming through. You see the... Curtains blowing, huh. ethereal in the wind. Walk over to the window to go see, make sure it is shut, because he said it was locked, and it was shut. There should not be any wind, yes? As you're about to make your way over towards the window, you see a figure, a slightly glowing figure. It, it seems semi-translucent, and it's floating in through the window. You see long, white hair flowing past its shoulders. You see this gaunt face with glowing white eyes and a lo- kind of a long robe almost like a gown as it floats in through the window and looks little. around the room go ahead and make me a stealth check again just to see if this thing sees you off the top it then so as it floats in you see it looks over towards the bed and it's about to move over there and it stops and it turns in this echoey voice you. I scream like a girl. <laughs> and that's all number. So the three of you hear <laughs> this scream echoing from the room. That d- d- definitely does not sound like a dwarf, but is very recognizable from your travels with Lindo. First ghost. <clears throat> uh, kick down the door. Kick down the door. I pull on the rosa. So you draw your sword and... The two of you kick the door. Elliot, you come in behind. So the, mm-hmm. the three of you are standing in the doorway. Lindo, you're standing slightly off to the oh, side. Charlie's at angel this. style. And in the window, this ethereal form shrieks out, Now! It must be now! As behind it and from the other window, the shattering of glass is heard. And you see four roughly humanoid shapes swing in from outside. And you swing as in looking like they're coming in via ropes, and they're draped in long white bed linens with holes in the eyes. And you see them burst in, two of them drawing scimitars, the other one drawing a morning star, as we roll initiative. Oh, right. Don't eat 
it to me! All right. It didn't actually matter. <laughs> oh, yes. first roll. Oh. Elliot, better that. 12. Than things. Will, Linda. 17. Wilf. Four. <laughs> Jackson. I don't, I don't go last. Six. All right, Nailed then. it. Okay. Nailed it. I've been eaten so many times. <laughs> first roll. All right. So that brings us to the top of the round with Lindo. You see the these forms. There, there's the ghostly ethereal form standing there, and then three other humanoid forms with the well, what look like sheets pulled over them. Okay. Tied with rope at the ba- at the waist and holding scimitars and morning star. I, I dart around and I look and I'm like, okay, 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 ah, ah, and I. Strike it whatever is closest to me, which looks like this ethereal form, I suppose. The ethereal form certainly is closer. Ha ha! Oh ha! Mm hmm. A 12. A 12. You, you, you step forward and you, you take a stab, and it seems to kind of swish out of your way, but you do feel your rapier catch a little bit on the robe as it goes past. And you fought ghosts and spirits before, and usually that's more of kind of a, like you're attacking thick smoke. <laughs> this felt like you tore something's robe. Guys, mm-hmm. I think uh, I think that my scream was a little unwarranted. Elliot, okay. your turn. Um, From the bed you hear, oh, oh, what, what's going on? What, what's happening? They put! We will handle this. It's what you pay us for. I got him. Uh, I run up to the guy. Which one? The the guy we're protecting. And kill. Yeah. yeah. And I put my hand on him. You hear the sound of a door opening as I dimension door out of the room. Okay. So so Elliot rushes in. You'll love that. Pushes, par- pushes the, uh, the curtains away from the bed. You see him looking around wild-eyed as he gets a, a view of the things that are happening in the room. He's about to say something when you grab him by the shoulder and then mm-hmm. you pop out of the room and uh, you're now standing in the hallway. Yep. And he's looking around. What happened? What happened? Seems like you were being attacked. I don't know if by ghosts, but by people. Get, get them! Get them! Obviously. All right. So, uh, it is their turn. So, the ethereal form in front of Lindo shrieks out, moves its hands in kind of a swishing form, and then fans out its hands in front of it as, uh, go ahead and make me a reflex save. As a fan of flame. Dex, dex save. Sorry, excuse me, dex save. Yes, right. seven. Seven. Okay, so you're going to take half damage as a... Uh, sorry, yes, dex save, not reflex save. This is <laughs> fifth edition. Good I, job. I know how these things work. We've only been playing it for, you know, a couple years now. Three or four years. Take a couple years. You take uh, seven points of damage oh. as a burning hand spell fills that portion of the room in front of it. I disagree. That seems not very ghostly. Uh, the three individuals wrapped up in sheets, uh, the two that have the scimitars drawn, one of them makes their way over to Jackson, one of them makes their way over to Lindo, and the one with the morning star heads over towards Wilf. Guys, this lady is very not for rude. Me. So, uh, scimitar incoming at Jackson, that is a 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cute. Right. Uh, the one <laughs> on Lindo, uh, that is a 15. Did you? A 15, it does not hit me. Okay, and the Morning Star on Wilf. Uh, that is a 17. Uh, nope, no. Okay, so they whiff, whiff, whiff. Whew. That's That was actually uh, <laughs> one less than my see. Yay! Okay. <laughs> and uh, that brings us to Jackson. So I draw my shield, I uh, draw my sword, we'll have to hold the shield, and I cast Consuming Flames. Okay. Oh my. 30 foot radius. All right. Each enemy needs to make a deck saving throw. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Ethereal form. Nope. And what's the DC? 13. Still nope. Okay. Um, the first scimitar makes it. Second scimitar does not. And the one well, with the morning star makes it. So the two that did not make it take uh, 4d6 fire damage. Okay. Mm. Uh, let's That's see. Spicy. That would be a uh, twenty. Twenty points for the for total, and then half for those who made it. Uh, no. 
uh, make a deck saving throw or 46 fire damage. Okay, no save for half? No save for half. Okay. Sad. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so only... Oh, no, no, sorry. It takes half damage and isn't set on fire. My apologies. Okay. okay. The two that make it, that don't make it, are on fire and at the... At the start of each turn, takes one d six fire damage. Okay, so uh, the the ethereal form screams out and is enveloped in that flame that issues out from you uh, and falls crispy to the ground. Uh, you can see this wispy illusion start to unweave from it. Uh, one of the people dressed in the uh, the sheets also goes up in flame and falls dead. <laughs> Uh, oh. The two others uh, are quickly batting out the flames, but they're, like, rasping and wheezing. These are not ghosts at all. These are obviously people. Ish. Well, the first one was a ghost. So, Wilf, there are now two there. Both of them are coughing and hacking as this gout of flame. There's more of gravy than a grave about you. Uh, vicious, uh, vicious mockery. <laughs> He's gonna need to make a will, uh, a wisdom. Okay. A will save, huh? There's a more what? A will uh, save. That is a 15. <laughs> Damn, he makes it. Okay. Nicely done. I appreciate that. Do you? I do. <laughs> uh, okay. So, anything else? Um, I'll use my bonus action to give Jack some inspiration. Woo! Okay. Jackson inspiration. Uh, back to the top of the round with Linda. Smoke them lock attacky. Hello. Now that smoke I turf. know that they are people, I just I, go ahead really and charge for fun. So I go and hit the person to my left. Okay. Uh, the closest one is the one that attacked Wilf. Okay, then I attack that one. Okay. First try. Uh, 21. Uh, you hit. Da, 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 da. And you do get your sneak okay. attacks. I do. Yep. Which I believe I get one, two, three, and a four. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Eight. 16, 17, 18, 19, plus three. 19 plus three. 21. Is how much I ate? 20, 20, 22. Yeah. 22. Yeah. Uh, so you, you run up and just skewer him through the middle, and he. <laughs> Perks looks down. That's what you get for making me feel like a lady. Momentarily, and then slumps down and dies. That's a lot of blood for a ghost. I also turn and I use my up hand to stab the other one. Okay, roll it. Uh, 17 plus 6. No, it totally hits. Do, 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 do. Come here, D8. Do, do. Uh, 5. Same thing. This one you swing your off hand out and skewer him through the side to which he coughs up a little bit more blood. Curls up and dies on the ground. And that is what you get for dealing with Lindo <laughs> Espina, the beautiful door. Mm. So, um. <sighs> I mean, I'm not afraid of no ghosts, but eh? I don't think that those were what we were dealing with here. I would say they were definitely a little bit on the uh, fleshy side. Oh, uh, yank off three of them. One yeah. of the uh, masks, the sheety bits. Uh, you are looking at a. Uh, Tiefling male. Um, looks shabbily dressed. The armor looks third hand at best. Um, definitely looks very bandit like. This looks awfully burglary to me. And they would have made it too if it wasn't for us meddling kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are times I wonder why we keep you around. Because I am handsome? No. Because I am witty? Yes. Maybe. Lindo, you're, you're also fairly, effective in combat. Lindo, you're I, fairly decent at checking bodies, are you not? I am decent enough. Why do you ask? Go look through them. See what we're actually dealing with. And look at the bodies! Mm. Uh, and of course, as you're starting to go through the bodies, uh, Einkel kind of stomps back, looking, looks in the room from around the doorframe. Oh, what happened? Well, your ghosts appear to be bandits in disguise. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew that hag wasn't to be trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, probably just a member of one of the local mm -hmm. gangs of ruffians thinking they could oh, scare me, thinking they could get in here and uh, well, scare me into giving them their money. See, this morning saw... Uh, seems like it's not really an intimidation tactic. I think maybe you shouldn't kick people without knowing if they're associated with the organized crime. You say as he walks over to one of the bodies, gives it a stiff kick and spits on it. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, now dead. that he's dead, that's... Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Don't suppose you have a, a standard body disposal unit in in the... Call the guard. They'll clean it up. Right, righto. Get the bodies out of my room. The bodies on the floor. Uh, yeah, get the bodies off the floor. Get grab the bodies one, off the... one, pick them up. Floor! All right. Uh, you make your way out, and as after you've taken the bodies out, you have a chance to kind of search through them a bit. Uh, each one's carrying a handful of coin, uh, a couple silver and some copper. No gold on any of them. There's not really much here to say that they are from anything or anywhere, and uh, they have uh, some pocket change. They were probably just here for the money. Uh, the one that you identify very quickly as a this Eladrin caster, uh, very much like stately, but again, once the illusion is off, you're seeing them as very like dirty, hasn't washed for a while, down on their luck. Uh, and they... It might have been a lot more glorious in the past. And on their body, you find a, a pouch uh, that contains ten gold. Okay. Worth of silver and some gems. You cut off. Oh. <laughs> uh, you also find a wand. I might just go ahead and bucket that gold for later. Hopefully without the seeing eye of our employer. Okay. Um, he doesn't seem to be paying much mind to the bodies after you've taken them out of the room. Uh, looting bodies is what seems to be under him. So, <laughs> He's a dwarf. There is not a lot that is under him. <laughs> <laughs> so, after a few minutes, though, the maybe guards wolf. do come yeah, running. Yeah, maybe wolf, yeah. Uh, much, much quicker than they have in other parts of the city, mind you. Uh, there's a pounding at the door. The guards let themselves in. They Hello. say that they are, are here because of a disturbance. It's the bodies. There's the disturbance. You guys explain what happened, what was going on. Uh, we were disturbed. We we fixed the disturbance. If that they're yours now, thank you. Uh, one of the guards does recognize them as uh, one of the local groups that uh, prey on the less protected folk of the middle class, the, the the kind that will pull people into alleyways and beat them up for their money. Oh. So they're assholes. Yeah. I feel a lot better about killing them. Common thieves and brigands. Although the caster seems a little out of place, they don't necessarily recognize that one. Uh, so they're not really sure, but they'll take them back and see what they can find so out. So the caster left them poleaxed? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> they say they'll bring, these, they'll bring the bodies to Commander Bale and uh, see what they can do. <laughs> oh, that's love. Bale loves picking up after us. I do miss Bale. Give him our regards. Yes. They, they will. And uh, best of luck through the evening and happy Winter's Feast. Yeah. Well. Winter's Feast. I always feel weird saying that, like, you know, because I don't follow Winter's Feast. Like, should I say Happy Winter? Or uh, is that yeah. PC to say Winter's Feast? I don't know. You know, enjoy your winter festivities. There you go. Yeah, you know, that like, encompasses all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So the guards take the bodies away. Um, the There don't seem to be any servants on staff. This evening, so there's no one to clean up uh, some of the mess. Although, it, as you make your way back up in, he, Einkill does, uh, as you're filing back in the hallway, he looks out and says, that, uh, There's some buckets down the hallway. There's some of this scrubbed up, and I can get back to bed. Oh, we're also cleanup girl. I did not know we were being paid for cleanup girl, but okay. You yeah, made sure. a mess of my carpets. <laughs> Oh. Excuse me? Yeah, it's going to smell like uh, roasted bacon in there for a while. You're you just going to have to get your... used to that. I could. I it's, do not wish to. It's better than them making Would a you mess leave? of you. So I do not have to do it? Fine. Thank I press you. a digitation. You clean them. He, he watches that for a moment. All right. Stained free and Fine. magical scented. Hmm. Maybe come by my offices later. I can have you clean some of that too. Absolutely not. <laughs> He turns and goes back to his bed. All right, now get out. Hopefully the rest of the night will be quieter. I have a question. Doubtful. What? I mean, like, go to the DM. Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> have I been invisible this whole time? No, no. You, you were you were visible at the... Uh, at the oh, oh good, because I was going to be like... Because it was like an hour. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Wondering. Uh, invisibility also drops once you attack something. Also yeah, true. and I'm yeah. a badass, but I can't make greater invisibility at the moment, so, you know. I do not know things. I am not magic. <laughs> I mean, that's entirely fair. It's a kind of magic. 
So before you uh, before you kick us out, mm. do keep in mind they started from inside the room. Mm. He looks over at the windows. Mm. All right, well, we'll just draw the curtains closed and keep a better eye out. I could I could hang out by your bed. No. I could put an alarm in your room so I know when somebody comes in. Magical alarm. I'm not gonna make a mess, is it? I'm just gonna leave a string. Just a string. Just a string. Alright. How much does that cost? Uh, For you? Five gold. No. That's a special deal. <laughs> I mean It's yours only ten gold. He just give you half off. <laughs> no, nah, get out. You tried. Such a lovely employer we have today. Is it? No. <laughs> okay, I was Linda. wondering if that was sarcasm, but Linda, I am yeah. having trouble. Sarcasm. Yeah. That right. one is hard for me. So you're ushered out of the room, the doors close, and you're waiting out in the hall. Ah. It's cold. There's no fires out here. There's nothing to keep you warm. The three candles are starting to burn down a little ways. I'm fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to go look for more candles. Oh, I cast light. You know, just... Bing. Okay. You know, for heat. You know, I, I get that. <laughs> for the lack of body weight that I have. I have an inner fire from Paylor. <laughs> yes. Do you? <laughs> Does he share since we are wearing his fancy armor? I mean, we're wearing Rindo. Dawn God cloaks. They're actually pretty warm. I take off my, my cloak because I don't need it right now and I hand it to you. It's a little cold at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like frostbite in my soul. <laughs> Just give it a second, it's fleece. <laughs> so, another hour goes by. It's quiet. You can hear the snoring from the room. And then you hear, from inside the house, you hear the sound of a clock chime. It starts to... Doom, doom. I've never really associated good things with clocks. I don't know. I think it has a good beat. It continues to chime the hour until it hits midnight. And as you're standing there, nothing seems to be going on. It's fairly quiet. And then those of you who don't really, you know, who aren't immune to this sort of thing or resistant, notice that it gets noticeably colder in the room. For just a moment. Elliot. As like a breeze rolls through the hallway. Elliot, calm down your chills. Calm, what? Calm them down. It's too cold in here. It's too cold. Well, yes. It is too cold in here. Uh, I don't know if you're excited. Uh, yeah. What you're doing? Looking around. Mr. Jackson. Yeah. I'm taking a look around, keeping an ear out. Sun's undead. That's a thing you could do. <laughs> <laughs> not, not with this oath. Yeah, no, totally. Oh, everyone, can. everyone, yeah. okay. All, all, all pally. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's universal. All pally. All, right. can. all pally can. Yeah. A pally can. Yeah, it's so, like it's got a big beak. Oh so you, you yeah, and maybe of, like, like scoop re- up water. <laughs> <laughs> you start reaching out with your senses to see what there is, and about the time that you're doing it, you hear from behind the door. You hear this. <laughs> Kick the door. Is laughing. Yep. And time to go in. The muffled sound of like. And you turn, you put your boot on the door, and it boom resists your push. Didn't break open nearly as easily as it did before. Okay, ready? Go One, ahead. two, three. Nope. Give me a strength test. Strength. <laughs> if anyone's assisting. I am assisting! Okay. I'm well. obviously strong. <laughs> That's going to be an 18. Okay. An 11. All right. Uh, so, Jackson, you with, with Lindo helping, you put a boot to the door, Lindo shoulders into the door, you hear it crack under the pressure as it bows in slightly but doesn't fully go open. And as it does so, you can just get a look between the doors and you see the room is brightly lit. And inside you see what look to be like holly leaves and little dancing lights Above the bed, you see this large, imposing figure, big beard, long, flowing robe, standing o- next to Einkill. That looks and like some fey bullshit in there. Laughing <laughs> down at him. Seems to be in good spirits. Let's get in there and know him better. All right, I shall go in. Misty step. Okay, so you misty step in. 
Go ahead and roll me another strength test on the door. I am still a 16. Um, yeah, no, that's a... A 10! <laughs> that's, a, that's a 12. A 12. You two both slam into it again. There's more cracking. In Elliot, the open the door! Elliot, you misty step in. You feel warmer. You feel that the room is comfortable. The fire is raging. There's light throughout the room. I've got an idea. Very Damn. comfortable. And as you get in there, you see this tall figure reach down and puts a hand on Einkill's shoulder and then just disappears into a puff and a wisp out the window. Oh, damn you. Um, Naldricana. Okay, roll it. I don't know anything. Um, <laughs> 11. 11. All right, you aren't quite sure what it is he just did, um, but it didn't really look a lot like some of the spells you've used. Mm -hmm. You think it might have been like a form of Misty Step or Dimension Door, but it looked different somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and give me another strength test on that door. Got it! All right. 14. 13. All right. So the three, the, the, finally, your boot hits it. Lindo, your shoulder hits it. The lock, which apparently was engaged, cracks open. And you make your way into the room as the lights are fading, the fire is dying down, leaving the room cold and empty again. Elliot, what did you do to our guy? I did nothing. It seems like he was whisked away. Maybe you should have done something. I didn't have much time. Um, maybe we should try to uh, see whereabouts he went. Where did he go? Um, he teleported. Like, no no traceries or anything like that? Give me a second. So we're going to enter into a skill challenge. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow you to attempt to make some rolls to see if you can find where they have gone. Lindo is full of skills. Is he now? Isn't he? <laughs> so pick a skill you think might be useful in this instance, and we'll see how it goes. Oh, no. Okay. Mm. Animal handling. What we need to do is we need to make five successes before three failures. Acrobatics. Uh, uh, knowledge religion. Okay, roll it. So we've got... Deception. Fourteen. Fourteen. You vaguely have some recollection of stories that were told about somewhat benevolent spirits, or at least spirits that aren't necessarily of the undead variety, uh, that have been known to basically be like an extra conscience to people. Uh, the style that you saw here seems to bend that way, but you don't know much more than that. Um, investigation. I'm going to look for clues about where, from where they are, uh, whence they teleported from and to. Okay. And that is a 15. A 15. As you make your way around the room, you're starting to look for really anything. Uh, over by the dresser, you see what looks to be uh, hidden kind of off to the side, a, a satchel. Ah, a clue! You, you open it up, and there's paperwork in there. It seems to be uh, payroll paperwork. And list names of employees, uh, listed addresses, uh, list of amount of pay for work done, that sort of thing. And seems pretty much like, eh, okay, it just doesn't really seem to make any difference as to what's happening until you flip about five pages in and you note that there is one listing uh, for a Mr. Crutch and it says that they had requested apparently three times this month a raise and that they had been denied every time. Hmm. A Mr. Crutch has apparently been trying to get more money and uh, it's trying to... Squeeze, you know, blood from a gravel or stone. Yeah, it sounds like it. A dwarf? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so. It seems, it seems rather rather bad to say trying to squeeze money from a dwarf. <laughs> it does seem like it would be a little problematic, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lindo, is there anything you're doing to attempt to assist? I can't flip into the air. To know things, right? No, not in this case. <laughs> okay, uh, I cannot play my guitar and woo answers from the wind, right? Mm, probably not. Okay, uh, can I use perception to look out the window? Yes. 
Okay, so that's a 15 plus 7, so... 22. I mean, is he just sitting out there? <laughs> <laughs> so, you make your way to the window, and you, you look out to see if there's any clue as to where any of this has gone. And looking out, you see, you know, the starry night with a little bit of cloud cover, some snow coming down. The snow has gotten up to be several inches. And towards one of the walls where there have snow drifts have built up on top, mm -hmm. you see a portion of that seems to have been blown away. Not like crushed down, but like a portion of it something moved fast by it and blew some of the snow off of it. And it's heading off towards deeper into town. Hey! 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 What? hey. What? Look! Look! Look at the window! Yeah? You see it? It's what? like a swoosh! It's like it's like when Elliot goes swoosh! Oh, okay! <laughs> it's like he was flying or something! Some sort of crazy babe bullshit! <laughs> right? Yes? I think so, maybe. Elliot. Yes. Look at the window. Isn't that like when your thing goes swoosh? What? When you're like doing the flying thing and it goes swoosh. I don't fly. Lindo. Uh, Lindo. What? I mean, you have. Lindo. I have. Yes. But I don't Let usually. <sighs> okay, fine. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, I'm going to sit for about 10 minutes and cast sending. Uh, 10 minutes? Okay. You're going to wait 10 minutes? It's what I can do. At least I can talk to him directly. I mean... Oh. I don't okay. think we have 10 minutes. We do not have 10 minutes. Sure. Um, do you have a skill? I'm going to look. I'm going no, really. to... I already used a, a, a Arcana. What about the investigation? You already used that. You know, if you, you had said something about, like, you used our nature spirits and such. The spell. You haven't used it as part of the skill challenge. That's okay. Um, I'd much rather spend the time and see if I can talk to him directly. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to try Arcana. It's not going to be as good, but, you know, I can do it. Hey, natural 20. Okay, then. <laughs> Wait. That so that thing. You start to look around to see where it is, like, that some of the magical energies might be coalescing, moving around. And you you start to kind of reach out more with your your intuition and your magical senses than you do with your just perception and you can i heard the motley crew with my magic hearing <laughs> <laughs> you, you you take a look out the window and you're you're kind of reaching out and you get this vague faint kind of trail that seems to be leading off and the sound that seems to be playing of a, a child crying and it seems to just echo for just a moment and then stop. Ethereal echo that way! You want us to just jump out the window and go? Well, I mean, you wanted to use your flippies. Go flip! I mean, it's cold out. It, you uh, hold, really hold should on. go. Hold, hold on. <laughs> I'm good to, to open up a drawer because I had seen a pair of gloves before. <laughs> I might just go ahead and take those. Okay. On. <laughs> They're probably very bulky, but you know. Hey, hey, if I'm going to do flips in the snow, I'm going to no. be wearing gloves. <laughs> Why don't you own your own gloves, Lindo? I don't know. I have not gone to the tailor to get myself some tight gloves. Well, really? That's that. weird. Right? <laughs> right then. So you gather your things, you put some gloves on, and you wish to follow it out, see where it goes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the whispering voice, because that's not creepy at all. I mean, it gives us a chance to do flippies after it. Who's us? <laughs> well, let's flip. Ha ha! Uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I got a twenty-one. Okay. I got the twelve, so I do a, like a somersault, but one with my knees bent, and I like fall halfway through it. <laughs> so out the window you go. Elliot, uh, Elliot, you're just watching them go. Jackson, you yeah. Stand there I'm just going to stand there. <laughs> I'm going to uh, use, uh, if, if I can, I'm going to use take all the clues of what we've we've told and use uh, insight to see if I can go figure out what's going on with this. Twenty. Okay. So as they're making their way out, and, and Wilf does a nice triple somersault and lands in the snow on his feet down below. Voila! Ha ha! Lindo. Poof. Does a, does a single flip and lands kind of superhero pose style. I am okay. So impractical. Uh, on the knees. Still warm because you're wearing Elliot's 
coat. And these sweet gloves I found in the door drawer. <laughs> uh, you are looking at all the things that you found and kind of mulling it over as to what you think it might be. Mm. And you get this, this feeling like, Perhaps this kind of spirit is trying to show him the error of his ways. Perhaps it's trying to prove to him that his his miserly ways and his his uh, selfishness are hurting those around him. Let's fuck it up! And you're starting to think that maybe he's been brought out to one of the more painful or uh, one of the, one of the worse offenses of this. And as you're looking at the pay stubs, you see the one that has listed and. Further down on the page, you pull it up and saying you show that uh, Mr. Crutch apparently cares for a small clutch of orphans uh, that had lost their parents during the attack on Callum Hall, and that he needed that money for the orphans. But there is a scrawled note in the nice, neat handwriting uh, from Einkill stating that maybe they should just get jobs. Are they in a hospital? No. Okay. I believe he's. they're headed towards the orphanage. Uh, there's an address for Mr. Crutches. And here's the address. Okay. All right, let's so, go. I'm going to walk to the, down the stairs and out the door <laughs> and then just walk fairly briskly in the snow because I don't have to go slow in the snow. Hey, those panties, hurry up. <laughs> I am not going to jump out the window because that sounds terrible. <laughs> That's fair. I will follow Elliot. So as the four of you... Make your way out, those of you who are outside running towards the front gates, or at least moving that direction through the snow. Uh, the two of you making your way down the stairs and out the front. You're gathering up and making your way out through the town towards the address. This is where we're going to break for intermission. <gasps> oh! In- intermission? Yes. Uh, the intermission. What a show. The intermission. No, no, no. no. The intermission. Oh, no. Now we'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are beautiful. So this is going to be the first attempt at this, but of course, as we move forward with uh, uh, doing our show, we're going to be de- breaking in the middle so we can break it up to other shows. Uh, so take a look, you listen to some music, and uh, check out some of the fan art that we have had submitted. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. We will be back in 10 minutes, and uh, we will see you soon. Have fun! <laughs> Hi, this is your host, Mark, of Digital and Dice. I wanted to thank you all for being part of our first Hazardous Endeavors live stream. What you're listening to right now is just a mid-show break. Uh, If you are watching the live show, you will be seeing fan art that is submitted to us at digitalanddice at gmail.com. But I'll be cutting out the middle 10 minutes or so for the audio version. So if you're joining us on the RSS feed or iTunes, And uh, thank you for downloading. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, We hope you enjoy season two. We'll be figuring out the audio to make everything a lot more crisp and kind of matching up to season one. So thanks again for joining us. And now back to the show. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we can you can hear us now. You couldn't hear us. Sorry. <laughs> we we had this wonderful moment where we had Kazoo Sandstorm going on. Yeah, we really we did. did. And we missed it because Mark forgot to hit the mic. I forgot to unmute the mics because this is the first time we've done this. Woo! Yeah. So if only we had some sort of sound guy who could be running this for me behind the scenes. Yeah, but then I wouldn't be on uh, camera. <laughs> or All right, <laughs> bye. Get back here, Jackson. Sit your ass down. Okay, there we go. Everything's fine. All right, so this is normally where, if this were going to be the further episodes in the season, where we would pick, basically pick back up as if it were a new episode, because we're going to release them as separate episodes mm. uh, for the podcast. Uh, but because this is our holiday special, it's going to be one uh, longer episode where we're going to just kind of continue off where we left uh, without doing another intro. Oh, sound good? Sure. Okay. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Nice to me, but whatever. Let's go. We're following the dude. Yes. Uh, our intrepid adventurers had made their way out from uh, Einkill. Uh, what was a screw gavel? Screw gavel. I don't know. Yes. You made up the name. Einkill screw gavel's uh, mansion, and we're starting to run through the the snow covered city 
attempting to find the the house of Mr. Crutch, where he keeps all of the orphans. You just came off sounding a lot worse than I think I intended it to. He just keeps he just orphans. He keeps his orphans. Yeah, yes. he keeps them in his sack because they are terrible, and he keeps them with sticks. He's actually the Krampus. Yes. What? Uh, Krampus? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we, have till, we have till sunrise, right? I mean, where do you keep your orphans? Obviously in my sack. <laughs> right. uh, no. 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 When does I those are not your future go orphans? Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. Either way, they're never going to know their dad. <laughs> You'll know me. I sent Christmas cards. <laughs> I thought you didn't celebrate winter feast. He just, he just sends Christmas cards to every orphanage. Just, just to be on the safe side. Right. <laughs> it is a lot of postage. <laughs> All right. Actually, the reason why Lindo goes out on adventures so that he can afford to send enough winter festival packages <laughs> to all the orphanages that he assumes his illegitimate children are. Giant boxes of lentils. That is fair. I'd also like to point out while while we're while we're still technically in the middle here, uh, we are not going to be responding to chat while doing the game very much. So that's just something we're. We're trying to stay on track with the game. Things would go a little bit too long if we were responding to all the chat. So we, we are paying attention to it. We're looking at it during our intermissions. So uh, definitely keep talking. Let us know what you think of it. We will be reading your comments. Uh, we just won't be reacting to them in the middle of role play. So uh, thanks. Yeah. Yes. Um, so where we last left you, you are rushing through the snow-covered streets of Callum Hall making your way to Mr. Crutch's. Uh, I need a... For the place where he keeps his orphans. I need an investigation or a perception check for those of you who are attempting to locate where you're going. Ten. Okay. Hey. Eleven. All right. And the most skillful of all skillful roles. Fourteen. Fourteen? Twenty-three. Okay. Uh, How does he see over the snow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been riding on Jackson's shoulders. Ah. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, you waited for us to catch up. Good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. So, Wilf, you, having been around town a little bit, just due to the nature of your traveling, barding, and all the other stuff, and also gathering the information that you have, you would have a pretty good idea of where the the home of Mr. Crutch is. It is in one of the more poor districts, uh, just not quite, like, hovels, but definitely less well-to-do. It helps that I actually pay the orphans. That is true. And they would more than likely let you know where they were staying in some cases. Because because they're my they're my uh, you bait the orphans for what? So wait, what you're saying is is that Mr. Crutches is where you keep your orphans. <laughs> <laughs> they're not mine. I just trained them in a weapon and then set them loose to go kill rats. So Mr. Crutches is more like an orphan pimp. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we're going to walk this one back. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to walk this one back. Lindo. Lindo. Uh-huh. Lindo. Maybe we should uh-huh. try to leave that one in the past. I am not the one who is paying orphans <laughs> to go kill rats. Rendered. <laughs> For services rendered. <laughs> right, Jackson. I'm just following it to, it to its logical conclusion. I mean, to each his own, okay? You know, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm, 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 I'm judging. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> don't don't look at me. Anyways. I am not a priest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's walk this one back. <laughs> Two steps forward, five steps back, and there we are on the streets of Callum Hall, rushing through the snow. Dashing through the snow and back. Yes, you are indeed dashing through the snow. We're using our action to move as well as our movement. Nah, I'm just walking. (laughs) I mean, yes. Okay, you're casually walking. (laughs) Which is keeping up with them. Basically because you're ignoring the difficult terrain that is the snowy terrain, yeah. (laughs) So you're making your way through, you're rushing down the way, and eventually you turn down one of the alleys, turn down one of the streets, and you see... uh, Illuminated from a a light from a window, uh, you see two figures. One taller, hulking, robed figure, big beard, standing next to a, the shorter, squat form uh, that you recognize as the, the nightgown 
of, uh, of Einkill. And as you approach, there's this kind of like, almost like a bubble feeling, like you step through something and you feel your voice almost, like all sound around you is muted slightly. Almost like things are being muffled a bit. Hello? 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 And Hello? It's, it's like your voice isn't carrying very far. Ah. That's normal. Ah. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, well, see me, son. It all started with the street, the morning choir. You know, at home it's getting warm by the fire. Okay, now stop. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can count on you there, Brian, for that. Thank you. Uh, you know that Einkill doesn't seem to be, like, in danger, per se. He, he's he's talking with this figure, and as you make your way and you hear the voice uh, of the tall one looking down, he, he says, You see, you see, this is what you have done. This is what you could make better if you only cared. Einkill's looking through this window, and as the four of you approach, you get a look into uh, the kind of fuzzy glass, a little smoky, into a living room where there's a fire going. You see a table uh, laid out with some food, not a lot of food, but you see there just aren't a whole lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of warm food there. There's like a, a, a pot seems to be like a half full of some sort of gruel, uh, some bowls laid out, and you see a uh, kind of middle-aged human man uh, dishing out some of this into these bowls, and you see about a half dozen children who are sitting there looking, well, not unhappy, but definitely like they could be in a better place. Uh, one of them, though, towards the end by the fire, you see a young halfling boy who is uh, sitting in a chair, seems to be missing a leg down below the knee, and he's got a, a single kind of twig crutch that is leaning up against his chair, and he's just warming himself by the fire, shivering. You know, if he wasn't making very much money, he probably should not take care of so many orphans. You know, like maybe some rehouse a few, but that's the flyers. The, the figure turns to look at you. Gives a, a big warm smile that actually does feel like it warms the area slightly. He gives us a, a, a His eyes look sad and he nods and says, Mr. Crutch's heart is much bigger than his ability to follow through on what he deems is his duty. Sounds like a poor planning problem. He should really get a manager on that. His heart's in the right place. The, the, the large man looks at Jackson and nods understandingly. Seems to just not quite <laughs> pay any attention. As he thought about Let sending some of the orphans to the orphanage. I mean, that's what those are for. I mean, isn't there institutions that can take care of them? You know, workhouses and such? As he talked to the city? Uh, I kill turns and looks and says, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's places they could work and go and... And just oh my thing waged. What, about the, what about the soup kitchen? You too. <laughs> the, the tall man looks looks down at Einkel and puts a hand on his shoulder. Says, uh, Unfortunately, it is not within their means to make enough money to support them. And while some may have the ability to go and work for those who will pay, as he looks directly at Wilf. Some, unfortunately... Rat catching is a noble profession! <laughs> some cannot. As he motions towards the young halfling boy by the fire. Who, again, shivers slightly as Mr. Crutch brings a, a bowl over to him. Looks about half full. Uh, the, the young halfling takes it, smiles a smile with not a full, you know, compliment of teeth. And, and starts to slowly sip the gruel from the bowl. I think he needs some dental work. Oh, well, I know what it's like to live without a limb, Jackson. You're getting there. <laughs> Hi. He gives you an icy stare. <laughs> it's not so bad. Look, at look. It, we call you Stumpy. Hey, Stumpy. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't touch me with your stump. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm sure that, you know... Mr. Screw Gavel can afford to lend them a hand. Ha <laughs> ha! <clears throat> At least you have a leg up on him. The, the tall figure. Oh, God, you people. <laughs> the tall figure at this point is just kind of 
looking at, he looks at all of you, and then turns to Heinkel. <laughs> you see, for only a pittance more than what you are paying, well worth the amount of effort that he puts forth the three jobs that he does for you, Mr. Screwgavel. He could afford to give these children the life that they deserve before they are found a forever home. Why not just take stuff from your house and give them to them? It's not like you are using them. I turns and looks at you like you just spat in his face. Then I spit in your face? Uh, he's he's working I mean, three I have jobs for you? No, uh, he does work on the side. He cleans. He does paperwork. He I saw the payroll. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't... I can find other people to do the work for cheaper. He's lucky to have a job in this. It, yeah? How many people were lost when the city was attacked? There's Lots. Businesses closed. There's very few places for people to work for as good of money as I am paying him. That not that's not necessarily accurate. I mean there's there's other places. It's just that, you know, you have to actually not have a job to go hunting for a job. I, I, it's very, very difficult. You're putting him in a very bad situation economically not speaking. My fault. I'm pretty sure you are paying us six hundred gold. Uh-huh. To protect you for a single night. Uh-huh. And how much are you uh, paying this man every, say, 30 Makes days? a decent salary. How much is he, uh, does he get paid there, Mr. GM, considering I saw it, like, uh, half an hour ago? He makes about 50 silver. 50, 50 silver a month? Yeah. 50, 50 silver a, mi- a month? Mm-hmm. 600 gold one uh-huh. night, 50 silver every uh-huh. 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not feeling the weight here. Your uh, your services don't come cheap. It's true. It's true. I mean, like, if I had come I to you and promised you fifty gold, you wouldn't take the job like you have anything to speak of. Walking around with the amount of wealth in your pockets that you're wearing on you, I don't need to take this from you," says Scrooge. Screw Gavel, who tuckle tucks into his uh, nightgown a little bit and shivers slightly. Just so you know, I only pay two gold for these tight pants. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> also, um, you don't have to take it from us, but I suppose you do have to take it from the big guy right there, because, uh, you know. What is that, like Father Winter or something? Like the North Wind? What What's going on over there? It's got sort of an Ivy King motif going on there. He, the, the, the large man just laughs and booming. His voice carries uh, a ways and no one seems to pay any attention. Obviously laughing loud enough that you would be able to hear him inside, but no one seems to notice. No nature, maybe? This oh. reminds me of somebody. I am uh, not happy. Not gonna oh, do it. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh God. Where I hear it. Oh, uh, no. I hear it. <laughs> Advantage? <laughs> <laughs> Roll it. Okay, so the 15 is going to stand. <laughs> he seems... Oddly familiar for some reason, but you can't like, quite place it. The look is completely different. I mean, uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. Are you uncomfortable? What's going on? And as as he leans down again, he puts the hands on uh, an ankle shoulders from behind. Leans down to his uh, beside his head in a voice you can just hear over the sounds of the wind and the snow and the laughing and the the camaraderie happening inside. He says, But you know, there really is an alternative. Unfortunately, you're not going to like how it looks. And he takes a step back from him, lets go. He he casts one more glance upon the four of you. And as he steps back towards a snowdrift, he starts to fade away. He gives a little bit of a wink as he disappears and you hear the sound of a church bell ringing nearby. It seems to fill the air around you with its sound that seems as if it's being run directly next to you. Uh, I, I mentioned that I'm starting to really dislike clocks and such. You know what I'm really tired of? The undead. <laughs> I am really tired. Church bell rings I'm again. I'm dead. I feel Uh-oh. like we've been working with them a lot recently. 
<laughs> keeping an eye and ear out to see for any uh, potential enemies. Ankel looks around and says, that's, uh, that's coming from the, uh, the churchyard nearby. Dun, dun, dun. Go out and take a look. All right. I'm not leaving you alone. You're not leaving me alone. Yeah, I was going to say. Obviously. Yeah, it's going to be the other way around for sure. I mean, you are paying us these 600 gold to make sure that you don't get the I don't want you running off. Where would we run? Mm. Mm. Lindo. Yes? You run off all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is fair. Put, we're going to put you in between us. Let's go to the church. Let <laughs> <I mean, clears throat> so, Lindo. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so you start making your way down the road and around the way, and you reach... The Church of Palor, large and imposing as it is, and you hear the bell ring again. And as you look around towards the back area, there's a uh, a fenced-in uh, graveyard, effectively that was mostly untouched uh, after the uh, aftermath of the recent issues in Kellen Hall. Are any of the brothers there? You do not see anyone nearby. Ah. What you do see is. In the graveyard, the, the gates, as you turn the corner and look at the, the low stone wall and the wrought iron fence, you see the gates swing open. Mm. Ankill shivers again. I don't, I don't like the look at this. Elliot looks at the bell, smiles. That gives me happy memories. <laughs> I mean, the memories where I was chased by a mob. You weren't chased. That was definitely unliked. <laughs> Lindo is never chased. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. See, that is funny because you're talking about Lindo's right. proclivities. Well, also, Lindo was chased by an angry mob for making a whole bunch of noise. I'll get it. I'll get the joke now. Sword out, shield up, okay. heading towards the graveyard. All right. So you make your where way is, down. Where is Ango? He's with you. He's, he's, like, like, he's between right? the four Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. And he's walking along, and he's just kind of shivering, holding his uh, nightgown close. And as you approach, you you get to where the gates have swung open, you're looking, and you see row upon row of the the stone headstones and statues uh, that make up from where some of the more wealthy patrons of the gods have been interred. Uh, And when you make your way in, you look around, and there is a a section towards the back where there is a uh, fountain with a statue uh, with a symbol of Palor over the top of it. it. At this point, frozen over, mostly, has snow on it. And beyond it, you see a patch of darkness. And as soon as you start trying to focus on it, you see the darkness kind of separate itself from the surrounding area into this massive form, 14 feet tall, draped with robes as black as the night sky. And you see one long, shriveled, bony hand Necromancer. make its way out, and it points to the side Guys. Guys. and down Guys. at one of the graves. Uh, what could it possibly be? It looks like a necromancer, right? <laughs> it looks a lot like a necromancer. I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, We fought it. I mean, I am Let's not comfortable a, with it. Just give it a second. It, it's not making any outward mo- motions towards you, but it is nearly standing there pointing down at one of the gravestones. I would like to greet it. Okay. I walk up to it. You, you start, as you walk up, it gets cold. Your, <sighs> your breath starts to frost more than it was before. Your skin starts to prickle and feel little bits of pain just ah. from the sheer icy feel of it being there. Oh, hello, I am, oh, Lindo Espina, the beautiful <laughs> thorn, and uh, this is my party, and we are here to greet you and say hello. <laughs> I am very cold. Keep, you, the rest of you, oh. are you standing back or are you keep, approaching? Keeping uh, Einkill close to me, I, I, I sort of sidle up towards that uh, grave he's pointing at. Okay. Oh. Einkill's moving forward with you, doesn't, doesn't stop looking at the tall figure. He's a pretty ominous. What can we do for you, friend? It, once again, it, its hand still pointing for emphasis 
points again. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not read the markings on the gravestone. <laughs> um, uh, Elliot! <laughs> Elliot! What do you what, need, Lindo? As you make your way over, you, you brush some of the snow off the headstone, and you see written in dwarven runes. Do you speak dwarven by any chance? Uh, no, no, I'll speak, I'll speak common and gnomish. Okay, anyone? No. No. Neat. <laughs> so, it seems to be written in Dwarven Runes, although the moment that it, it gets brushed off, Einkill grabs your arm tightly and what? starts to shake. What, what does it say there, it's big guy? Obviously That's cold. A, uh, um, it's, it's, it's mine. It's my gravestone. But wait, so, the alternative is... You die. That's that is that is some false. That's the, uh, the figure. Motion uh, moves one other arm open. Its cloak seems to open into a black nothingness that seems to swirl for a moment, and you see this this image, and you hear these voices echoing from people walking on the street, and you hear them talking just offhandedly, like you're overhearing their conversation, and you hear them. Uh, this uh, half-elven man speaking with a gnome, and they're walking down, and the gnome looks up and says, Oh, you hear he's dead, then? The half-elf shrugs. <laughs> About time. <laughs> You're just waiting for him to kick the bucket. You heard they're selling their stuff over in the commons, eh? Gnome. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the only way you're going to get him separated from his stuff. Maybe we should go take a look. They, they laugh and walk away. I think they're talking about ankle, eh? You know, I've, I'm gonna say this. This seems like it, it is a, a flawed argument. It's if ankle's gonna die anyway, it doesn't really matter if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I mean, it's gonna matter that if they think that he's an asshole or not. Because well, it's all right, Ankel. You're an asshole. He's still shaking and, and staring now at the individual in front of him. But now you're trying to brood over your own sense of righteousness about this bloody thing. And I've got to say, that is, you are doing, you are intimidating a man into reapproaching his, his life ways. The That's... visual starts to skew again and you're seeing a, a picture of a scene of, of Mr. Crutch sitting on a street corner sobbing and he looks down at his hands and he's holding that twig crutch that the small halfling boy had had. That looks like manipulation. And <laughs> he holds it tight, stands and he takes a step out into the street and a cart slams into it from the side. What the fuck? Why would you show us that? I believe... I'm Sobbing and shaking. Okay, you point. know what, Ankel? They are trying to structure your life experience. <laughs> you do not have to take this bullshit. Ankel, looking at you. I uh, 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 don't. So, Ankel's still uh, holding on to my arm, right? Yeah, he's just holding on like a death grip. You are Protection a from good and evil. <laughs> he's still shaking. He's looking. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're right. You're a dwarf. A dwarf loves his money. They're, they're, they're trying to, to scare me. This is trickery. It is I'm trickery. A, I'm going to be pretty honest with you. You're still an asshole, and you need to pay here that man more money. More money. But, but if I'm going to die, then why does it matter? It doesn't matter. I just make sure the rest of my clan gets the money. I well, then your clan's also going to hate you because you're still an asshole. I'll just be, I'll be dead. It won't matter. I'll be, be in more than hands. Yeah, yeah, let's see how he locks that. Uh, you know what? I let that make uh, I believe more than was more of a family man. To, to which the visual in the, the cloak swirls again, and you're looking over at what looks to be the inside of, of a very angular building. Uh, you see what looks to be the symbol of Morden on the opposite wall, uh, an altar shaped uh, very similar to an anvil, and you see this very fairly well-dressed dwarf standing at the end, speaking in Dwarvish to a congregation. And as he's talking, you, you note that the tone, and while it's difficult to read the tone of Dwarvish speech sometimes, you note that it doesn't sound like he's saying very positive things. Wait, wait, he said you're a Grunbach. I know what that word is. <laughs> uh, Einkel, on the other hand, is shaking more so, and uh, has fallen to his knees. And is is just muttering. They're not gonna. 
uh, then they're not gonna they're not gonna give me they're gonna give me the right. Uh, they say that oh this, this cannot be. You know that that actually that is a very valid argument. Okay, maybe you should be less of an asshole. I don't I don't I can't I can't do this. I need to go. And Ankel turns and as he starts to move away, the, the figure opens both of its arms out wide and the rush of wind starts to pull. Oh shit! And it starts to, almost like it's being sucked in to the figure itself. And I need all of you to make me strength checks. Oh, strength aura saves. of solid ground. Okay. Um, anybody, any of us uh, within 10 feet of me gets advantage oh, good. on- Oh, good, a seven. On okay. saving throws and ability checks oh. against being knocked prone or moved against their will. Okay. So why am I not a stronger man? <laughs> <laughs> so strength saves. 10. 10. Uh, 14. 14. 12. 12. 20. Okay. Uh, of course. <laughs> so the two of you start to feel yourself being pulled across the, the open courtyard towards the icy darkness. I it's it. beautiful to die! I let it. You let it? I let it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Elliot just seems to let go and is, is getting pulled towards it. Um, okay. So, as you're getting pulled towards it, Elliot, uh, you feel the iciness start to bite in, and you actually take... Oh, uh, you take eight points of necrotic damage. Mm. As you feel it to start to almost tear away at your being, and pulling it towards you. Guiding bolts! Uh, the rest of you, by the way, who made your save get take four points. I, I did right. not take a four point. You take eight. I take eight. Wait, yeah. Okay. As it seems to be kind of pulling you into it. Wait. Nope. I do not take any because I'm special like that. Oh, you have your shield up? Yeah. Of course okay. I had my shield After up. Your shield. Uh, of course I had my shield up if I was going to plan on, you know, protecting a dude. Yeah. So uh, you cast Guiding Bolt. Yeah, at him. <laughs> Roll it. All right. Eat it. Oh. Can I use my evasion? Uh, not for this. Poop. That was a straight So save. I doubt a 10 is going to hit, is it now? You no, cast your spell. About that. <clears throat> this, this bright bolt of radiance flies forward and swirls as it seems to get sucked into the darkness and disappears. Well, there goes that spell. I need another strength save, again with advantage for those of you attempting to not do it, as it seems to be pulling you towards it again. Yeah, I might as Woo. well. 18. Okay, 18. 19. 19. With 15. a natural 20. <laughs> 21. Okay, and uh, I can kill himself. All right, uh, this time you're all able to kind of start moving away from it, and you're able to get about three quarters of the way out of the clearing area as you hear the howling from inside of it, as you see what look to be forms reaching out hands that look like nope, emaciated, nope, 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 frozen nope, nope, child's nope, nope, nope. hands reaching out from inside of it. You hear the, the screaming, the, the, the pleading of help us, help us. You are a sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, that do, do we roll initiative now? Or? Nope, this is, uh, this is uh, effectively another skill challenge if you're, you're trying to get away from it. Ah. That's different then. Okay. Well. What would you like to do? <laughs> Are you traumatized? I am very sad. <laughs> I would like to roll perhaps acrobatics? Roll it as you're attempting to get away from it. Had 13, a plus a 9. 22. So you start kind of tumbling, grabbing, and basically parkouring your way away from it using the graves and... <laughs> Trying to get things between you as you as you are making your way towards the exit, it seems to be growing larger and larger. In in that that end of the graveyard seems to be disappearing behind its giant bulk. Is it possible to grab like I'm kill along the way? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you grab okay. and you're pulling them. Uh, Jackson, you're doing the same. I was gonna use uh, athletics, roll, roll myself, and I'm kill. Okay. Boy. Let's do this. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, you basically grab him and just start dragging him along with you. Yep. Uh, I'd say, Lindo, you're tumbling and like moving. Can I drag with them? 
Yeah, your, your tumbling and moving is less uh, less efficient as the athletics of just dragging him and moving. Um, but you are able to start pulling him away from it. He's just screaming nonstop at this point. He's terrified. And you can see this like almost ghostly essence around him as it's kind of trying to be pulled in towards this thing. And he's screaming. He's like, no, no, I won't let it. I'll change. I'll do it. Elliot, what are you doing at this point? Um, Elliot, well, he's going to use his ability to walk in snow really easily. Okay. Um, with a mix of just trying to use things like, I'm probably going to use Misty Step to get 30 feet away. Okay. And then mostly Arcana to try to sure. like use my abilities as a as a Roll it. thing. Uh, 18. 18. So you're able to, like, maneuver and manipulate your uh, abjurer shield to kind of take some of the brunt of the uh, of the force that's trying to pull you away. And using Misty Step, you get yourself a bit of a head start, and you're able to make your way out as well. So you're getting towards the exit of the, the graveyard. Mm-hmm. So you get there. Lindo, you get there. Jackson, you get there. Wilf, what were you doing? Uh, I am going to try to mm-hmm. uh, I guess I'm going to try to acrobatics Roll my up. way out of that because Flip! 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 Flippy flip! Flippy! <laughs> your way to justice! 15? A 15. You're slowly making your way that way. You're, I have the expertise as well. Oh. You, you start to kind of dive and move back and forth behind some of the gravestones. You're still feeling that you're getting pulled back a little bit, but you're able to grab yourself and, and jump over one like final large kind of stone sarcophagus. This ghost really sucks. <laughs> Just as the four of you make it to the opposite end of the graveyard towards the gates, this thing is now eclipsing your view of that half of the city, the darkness from inside its cloak, the hands reaching out from inside of it, the screams and the howls from it echoing around you as the four of you plus Einkill tumble through the gates, leaving the graveyard and finding yourself tumbling down onto a wooden floor in Einkill's bedroom. I hate everything! A snow flurry (laughs) flying in just behind you. The door to the hallway leading into the, well, darkened hallway now that the candles have gone out. I'm sorry, but how are we not supposed to be dramatized from these things? I can kill sobbing on the ground in the fetal position, holding his knees. I, it's all right, I can kill. It didn't get you. Jackson, could you put him in his bed? No, ah, of course. Eh. You pick him up. Place him down. He's just ice cold. I, I'm just going to throw a little blanket over him. I'm going to okay. sing him a little song to cheer him up. All right. That uh, performance. Sure. Go ahead. Come home. It's all right. You don't have to be a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn your life around and everything will be much better. I mean, it's not going to make you live much longer, but... In the end, your neighbors and friends won't hate you. And that's 20. Okay. (laughs) Sounded like it. (laughs) So, as you guys... (laughs) Did we get a high five for that? We got a cheer. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. (laughs) Also, thank you for the sub earlier. Appreciate that. Um, (laughs) So, as you guys put him to bed, throw some covers over him, and just curtains. a single little blanket. <laughs> and the rest of the evening, as you as you stand back and look around, you, you keep watch. You stoke the fire in the room to get a little There's bit of a fire now? Well, there was a fireplace. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the evening goes by without anything of note. Oh. And the sun rises comes through the windows, 
Unless you guys are waiting on the hall. Of the nah. No, I am extremely paranoid. I am checking every corner at every moment for the next until dawn. Yeah, I definitely put up that alarm spell I keep asking him to put up. No, I am like walking around the outside. I am like burning my head at every little like rat that makes a sound. It is very upsetting. We had the three ghosts. Right. I'm going to check out the window after the sun rises. I'll keep a little bit of an eye out, but... What's that? The window's broken. It's well. Yeah, well, it's open. Yeah. Look What's out that? the window. Is there anyone out there? Um, you see uh, what looks to be, uh, well, one of the orphans that you saw previously uh, through the thing. Look out there! walking through carrying what looks to be like a, a bushel of uh, uh, shopping. Oi! Tulsa! He looks up. Yeah, what do you want? What day is it? It's Winter's Feast Day. It's Winter's Feast Day? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, Winter's Feast Day. That's what I said. Oh, What's thank with you? God, it's done! Oh, ghosts, weird things, time displacement, wibbly wobbly. Again? Uh, yeah, isn't it weird? <laughs> it always seems to happen around this time of year. Oi, how many rats did you catch last week? He reaches into a pouch, pulls out what looks to be a bundle of tails, starts thumbing through them. Uh, about 16. 16? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oi! Fill a little purse with about 10 gold. Mm hmm. Throw it down to him. He catches it, opens it up, eyes go wide, looks up at you. Keep your day job. Go get, go get that big, the big goose thing. Or do something, I don't know. Take your money, go have fun, kid. Get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? He closes the bag, shoves it in there. Bet it all, spend it all on chin. <laughs> <laughs> Just takes off down the street running. You know what? When I was his age... I would have definitely spent it on gin and woman. <laughs> gin and woman. Oh my god. Right. Uh, to which the noise seems to uh, to wake Einkill, who stirs from his slumber, opens the curtains of his bed, blinks away the light, looks around. <laughs> what, what happened? Oh, hey. What you day is it? It's, it's winter's feast. It's winter's feast. It's the next day. Yep. Yeah. That's what happens when the sun comes up. And it was a dream. It was all a dream. No, and no, 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 no you definitely, definitely was not got dream. your ass haunted. Yeah, we were definitely almost eaten by and, like a cloak. Well, the first ones were a bunch of just asshole muggers. The latter two were definitely ghosts. And I'm not saying I might have met a ghost a lot like it. I think it might be an could have been angel a demon. of some form. So, Probably a demon. Could Probably be a demon. a demon. It's a demon. A dancing demon. Oh, know. something's not right there. But they're gone, right? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, theoretically, I think they had this sort of motif going with them in the past, present, and future. And the future is always yet to come. And really, that's more of coming to grips with our own mortality in a sense. And then the thoughts of legacy. But the, in, in the end, you should really just pay that one guy more money. Yeah. And probably not be an asshole. Yeah, be a little bit less of an asshole. You're probably pretty okay. You think that, okay? Yeah. Wait, you think, you're saying that if I, if I pay, if I pay Mr. Crush more money, this, this won't happen again? Also, stop being an asshole. Yeah, the asshole part is a big thing. This is Mr. Crush's fault. No. He did this to me. Well, probably, No, yeah. you no, did it right sense. to yourself by kicking the old woman in the street. And unless you want to continue... It's the old woman's fault! <laughs> I mean, she did curse you, but theoretically, yeah. would it be cheaper to be nicer to everyone else and pay um, Mr. Crutch more, or do you need to pay us 600 gold a night for the rest of your life, regardless of how short that might be? You make a valid point. <laughs> it's really a sense of economics. All right, well. Also, also you know, condemnation of your church. You could, you, you, being nice might get you more clients. Mm. <laughs> It might be worth a shot. <laughs> All right, well. What is an economic? You've... Well, I mean, you know how it's... That being said, money. we still expect it's our money. money changing you've, hands. In you've a lot done of your stuff. business, money. you've done your job, and it's, uh, you did it well, so... We'll... As part of the season, you should probably pay us more money, too. <laughs> oh, Get your 600 Lindo. is great. Lindo. What? So right. In the spirit of the season, right? Lindo. Yes. Enough. Eh? Eh? Alright then. Perhaps maybe, um, maybe one more job then. 
Okay. Pay an extra 50 if you find that old woman. Okay. And, and stop her from ever cursing anyone out here again. What do you want us to do? I've got a much better idea. Huh? Much cheaper idea. What? Stop kicking people on the street and maybe you won't get cursed again. Fine. I All don't right. know. An extra 50 gold would not be bad. Lindo? Yes? Enough. Okay. Fine, fine. You'll have your money. Thank you for your services. I'll, um, I have something to th- I have things to think about. Right. Okay. I mean, pay us first. Yes, yes, come, come, come. He, ah. he, he leads you back into the foyer. He, he leaves off to another room and comes back with a small wooden chest. He places it down, gives you a... He pushes that across this little table and begrudgingly sticks out a stubby hand. Oh, no. I take it. And oh, I make it extra just, chilly. <laughs> he grits his teeth and shakes your hand. <laughs> and that's hour. what we call the cold hand of commerce. Ha ha ha! What is the uh, commerce? It's another word for large scale of money changing hands. Happy okay. winter's feast to you then, and uh, get the hell out of my house. Do you remember this evening? Yes. Happy winter's feast, and may P- Palo's light shine down upon you. Mm. Palo's light! Goodbye! And we leave singing a jaunty little tune about the true meaning of keeping love in your heart during Midwinter's Feast. Yes? I would like to roll to see if I can steal that candelabra. Roll it. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a 17 plus 6. So 23 on your sleight of hand? Yes. Well then, you learn the true meaning of Winter's Feast as you lift an old man's candelabra. Ha-ha! And a candelabra. leave with your well-earned money in hand. Yep. As the door closes behind you, you just hear this echoing. Really? Oh, 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 oh. oh, God. That man was a And castle. I feel like Agreed. someone has walked across Why my grave. I charged him five, do- five gold for a free spell. And as you make your way back off into the city to go for your, your reverie and your entertainment for the, the feast, you... Realize that you've done a good thing for a bad person. You've probably changed their mind at least slightly. And uh, that is where we will be leaving you for this episode. We also know how to break into his house if we ever plan to rob him. <clears throat> they also dropped the candelabra in some old lady's hat. <laughs> All right, then. A, a small old cronish woman sitting on the side of the street selling matches looks down at the gold candelabra, looks up at you, gives you a nod. <laughs> I wink at her. <laughs> Gathers it up and makes her way off into an alleyway. And that is the true meaning. Stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Scaring old people into giving away their money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just turned political. Filling them with guilt. <laughs> and that, dear Digitizers, is where we will leave you for this inaugural live episode. <laughs> holiday special of uh, a very hazardous endeavors Christmas. Happy holidays! Woo! And Palo bless us, everyone! (laughs) So thank you once again. I was your host, Mark, as GM. I am Wizard James playing Elliot. I am the Lady Grass playing Lindo as Mina the Beautiful Thorn. Voice over Brian playing Wilf. And sound guy Stephen playing Jackson Shaw. And please tune in to Hazardous Endeavors. We will be playing live every other Monday starting in January. January 7th will be, I believe, if my dates are correct, the first live stream episode that is going to continue us into Season 2 with the continuing storyline. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Twitch and uh, maybe check out our website. If you are listening via the RSS Please, we highly, highly appreciate any reviews we can get, any uh, subscriptions therein. Let people know that you found us, whether you like us. Uh, We will get better at this as we go along. Uh, So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here with us. Um, uh, Happy holidays from everyone here at the podcast. And uh, until next time, game on, internets.